Hi, my name is Ben Puka. This is out of Africa, the history out of Africa. It's a 10 meter painting by 180. You can see by yourself the greatest civilization our world have never known. The civilization that has given us everything we are enjoying today. Here you, you see the, the vision to the spaceship. The wheel. We all know in, in the Bible the Ezekiel wheel and uh, for thousands of years the the inhabitant of other planet and you can see the cross this is the cross the religion into that time you can see the dog having a vision and here you got the because everything in Egyptian time has a signification everything was used for something specific there were nothing for nothing so here you got the Pharaoh the Pharaoh kingdom the Pharaoh kingdom the pyramid are completely aligned with the universe with all the stars in the universe everything has been discovered into that time because the civilization have been there for more than 24 thousands of years we, nobody knows exactly how long it has been but by looking at the pyramid and all the construction that astonishing civilization something we haven't even be able to equal to equalize today so you got the 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 vase and the animal, the cat, the mystified cat and the vase and you see got the princess here coming with the cross. You got the light here because the light, the Egyptian has discovered the light. You cannot walk into the pyramid into darkness. No, it's impossible. All those all those writing into the pyramid couldn't be done with a, a lamp. No. They were lighting in the Egyptian time, you can see that in the artifact, you can see the light, the, the light bulb they used to use in that time. Everything has disappeared, but you still, it's just after uh, the European rediscovered Egypt that the boom in the, in the 18th century start all over the world. Everyone had been discovering something in that time because they went into Egypt and they found everything again. They took the medicine, they took the, the technology, everything the boom, the boom, the boom from Egypt. Everything was coming from Egypt. All the country went into Egypt. France, England, Germany, the American, all of them, they are the one who have been holding the civilization since. So, here, you got the princess and the light and the, the magic. If we move on into this part of life, because we need to remember that uh, the Egyptian civilization wasn't done just about uh, uh, life today, about uh, making wealth or about making money. It was it's the, the only, one of the only civilization connected with the entire universe, with the knowledge of the natural law, with the knowledge of every instance and the value of, of, of human. The, 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 the role on the, in life, because it's important as well to notice that most of the writing that are uh, into books like Quran and the Bible have been found in Egypt and they're still finding them more and more the discovery are going on. Here we have this god, the head of the animals, with the sandal holding a stick and from that stick the water can be dripping down in the form of a, of a river. So you got this god here, another way of uh, mystifying the existence of life because in that time they knew that we are all spirit we are not the body so a spirit person is a person that can travel thousands of years can travel faster than, than the light the, the spirit travel faster than the light so to see this kind of connection the water dropping from the pipe coming from the animal to snake on the head that has vision is the, the spiritual communication between human and the astral world, the world before our world. And everything that is done in our world always starts in the world before our world. Everything written starts in the world before our world. So they knew that technology and that in communicating with that world to bring everything out. Here, you got this head of crocodile. The head of crocodile 
communicating with uh, the astral creature and holding the swan, the knowledge, the breast, you can see the first sign of the, the angel because the angel have been existing since mankind, before mankind land on earth. Here we call the mermaid. The mermaid is not just a myth or whatsoever people they, they take it. They are creature under the sea. They are living creature under the sea. They are life under the sea. So the mermaid is there and water come from above and watering the mermaid. Here the angel is sitting on the stone and operating his power. So this is the second part of the painting. The first part of the painting is more concentrated about the earth about the earth, the pyramid, uh, the tomb, and the nature. The second part of the painting is about the water. The water, the how people can transform the water, is value in human life and uh, existence. And the third part is the painting about the wind. The wind is the breath, the breath of humanity. Breath, the wind, until we have breath, we cannot move. Even though the fish to the sea need breath to, to move. So this is the power that the, uh, those abstract creation can be affecting the nature by breathing. Breathing. You can see the tree moving because uh, the aim of the painting is to show the civilization into all its characteristics. So here you can see the tree moving. And you can see another broken tree in the position of, of human. Here, you can see the effect of the wind. The effect of the wind has a very powerful connection with the astral, connect, uh, the astral life. I mean the spirit. Spirit is like a wind. It's a breath. It's something that is unseen in our realm. So you can see those spirits who are affecting our universe when even we don't feel it. But it's the reality about our cosmos that life goes beyond the physical and start before the physical. You can see like uh, uh, when we are talking about the Big Bang, we are, we are really talking about something that comes from nothing. The sound, the breath. So this is the third part. Let's speak about the sound and the breath. You can see the tree, the tree transforming himself into a spiritual tree and having a direct connection and a direct affect about the life we are enjoying all of us here. So we got this part here. If you can turn and see this part that is talking about uh, the drum, it's a very powerful message here because the drum is uh, also the call of the sound but with effect. Here you got the abstract creature, the creature that are not in our world today but uh, affecting every single aspect and area of what we can do or achieve. You got the cross there, you got animal worshipping and washing what is happening into the fire. The fire, you got the wall above his head. This is a man that is into the fire but does not burn. It's a mystical process that is that most most of most of antique civilization revere. Yeah, you can see the the head and the sculptor into this head and the woman washing, having a drum in front of her, and another woman washing but backward. So it's a, a traditional ceremony of incantation of uh, and the call of a spiritual entity. So in this area, I can sum up the painting by showing the, the four components of the universe. The four components of the universe, which are the, the earth, the water, the, the earth, the water, the wind, and the fire. So the Egyptians knew it all. They have worked to bring the civilization alive by using every single aspect of the universe. So you can see that we still 
we still using those four aspects because everything that exists is based on the four aspects of, of creation, of nature. The, the earth, which is the first part of the painting, the, the water, which is the second part, the wind, and the fire, which is the, the last part. So, looking at our civilization today and comparing with uh, that wonderful civilization, spiritual civilization, that has been focused into the knowledge of the nature and uh, how to maintain harmony into our universe in order, in respect of the natural law, in respect of the nature, in respect of humanity, that civilization has lasted so long that we're still seeing the, the effect of, of the civilization and the thing that has been done during that time. How it's still affecting all life today. So, the good thing with uh, the remaining history of the Egyptian is that we can, we can try to go back to, to the roots of, of, of humanity, to understand that growth is not the aim of life, but to sustain life, to be able to maintain life, that is the aim of life, to preserve the earth for other generations. Growth is, uh, is the inverse. Growth involves destruction of everything. And growth does not bring any change in humanity. But by maintaining and sustaining things and in the respect of the nature and the natural cycle of life, we can keep our civilization for thousands and thousands of years like those one we are enjoying, other has lived. Thank you very much and uh, see you in the next painting.